the new Lamborghini Huracan Spider today in our static premiere review here at Autogefühl, your number one resource for in depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars. It has been here before since 2014, the new Huracan. It has replaced the Lamborghini Gallardo, which we also see there in the background, so we can also show you later the differences between the old model, the predecessor, and now the successor. And we also show you a difference to the Aventador, which is the kind of longer model with a little bit more horsepower, but you can't really say it has less horsepower here because it still has a V10. Now, as I said, the Spider version, the convertible, which promises even more driving fun. We'll take a look at all of the details this car offers in exterior and the interior. So from the technology side of view, this very car, the Huracan, is basically an Audi R8 from the all-new generation. And you might argue, is that good or is it bad actually? Well, recently we've shown you a lot of luxury cars that were actually, on a technological level, kind of bad. You know, they had a very fine finish and a lot of luxury features, but they weren't that good on the technological part actually. So I think it is actually an advantage that there's a lot of Audi R8 beneath that outside view because then you really know that it's also a good car for example also on the racetrack or just in normal day driving so i think it is an advantage however you could also argue yeah okay just rebadge it make it even more expensive but i think it is actually just the point of view but what's your opinion on that very issue just price wise it is actually the case because the audi r8 is slightly below 2000 euros german prices taken and this one here a little bit above 200,000 euros. So that's the basic difference. And of course, the Lamborghini is more expensive than the Audi. Starting with the front, it is of course the same than with the normal closed version or let's call it coupe version. You see, the Huracan is really having the slight headlights and the Aventador looks a little bit bigger in the front. This one looks a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more modern. And also if you compare it to the Galado, which we see you, uh, show you very soon, the predecessor, this one looks a little bit more dynamic also to the predecessor. You know, the predecessor is more like this rather angular shapes and old school style. This one here is really now state of the art. And of course, if you compare it then to the Audi R8, this one here way more aggressive. So you also attract a lot of attention. The Huracan is shorter actually than the Aventador. That's the basic difference is the smaller car, the more compact car. 4 meters 45 in length here now, and I think that's also an advantage to make it even more agile. As you especially look at the Spider here now, you see usually, well, you have a lot of differences between convertible and closed top versions, and here they really made it that you have, well, kind of an even roof line, and especially with those two tops here, you can see right there. And I think, well, they've done a very good job there in make it in convertible, still look very agile also when the roof is closed. Well, but usually you have one problem then when you have this convertible because it is usually a little bit heavier. That's the case here as well, around plus 120 kilograms. It's not that you really save the roof because, you know, the roof complex also takes weight away. And also you have the car usually to even a little bit stiffened up at the chassis to make it as stiff as a convertible as it would be as a closed version. However, this car here, due to using carbon fiber and aluminum, still very light, about 1,500 kilograms. Spider now a little bit heavier, but still for such a car with such a big engine, well, here, just in the back, of course, with such a huge engine with a V10 here in the back, still very low on weight. The roof here, by the way, will be available in three colors, black as it is here right now, but also in brown and red. And by the way, this Borealis orange color, very special, but I think it would more fit to a McLaren. Huge 20-inch rims here with really, you know, 
look at that, how spectacular it is. I can really put my hand in there, how huge that is. And carbon ceramic breaks and all of that you get from the series production here, what else you can expect. And now before we see how the car looks with the open top, because of course we'll show you that how that opens in about 18 seconds. Well, not in 18 seconds, but how the roof opens in 18 seconds. Let's take a look at the rear because the theme here, the design scheme is all horizontal. Look at how broad it is and how we see this going straight horizontal lines, very impressive here. And see, it's not a really calm design. It's again, very aggressive. We see a lot of shapes around here. And then four exhaust pipes, but you know, the outer ones, those are not the rear ones, but it's for the sound. You see there's also inside some small holes, but then inside you see the real ones. But those promise, again, a very good sound. And you know, this one really has a great sound. I wasn't really that amazed by the sound of the Aventador, the Perveloche, we've also shown you. Check that out in the video description. Because this one here is still a naturally aspirated engine. I'm looking forward to hear that one. Before we get into the details of the new Huracan Spider and also from the interior, let's first compare it on the exterior because this one here is the predecessor model now, the Galado. And you see the big difference really is that we here got more of these squarey kind of forms. You see the whole front is also not so many dynamic shapes, front and back again. It's more kept simple from the design, so the new one looks more dynamic, but also not that calm anymore, so to say. But which one do you like better? More the classic older one or the current one? I would be really looking forward to that. And one short look at the interior of the Galado Spider. Then you can also see the difference to the new Huracan Spider. And finally the rear, again the design scheme square. So you really see the difference from square to a lot of mixed dynamic lines with the new model. And now to show you the difference to the Aventador Spider. So we are all on the open top versions today. As I said, we also shown you it in more detail from the special version from the Super Veloce. So check out that in the video description. There's a link to that. And what you see in comparison now to the Huracan Spider here, the car is really longer. And you know, at the first sight, maybe there aren't so many differences, but when I get to it in detail, for example, you see that the front, the headlights are a little bit broader. So the Huracan is kind of slimmer with the headlights. Then especially the length makes a difference, especially the rear part, you see it's way longer actually than the Huracan. And so the Aventador has, let's say, a bigger appearance on the road, definitely. But of course, when you have longer wheelbase, longer car itself, you can also lose some of the agility. And um, that might be a difference than in driving. So, and also take a look at the interior because then we can also compare this interior to the new Huracan Spider. So that's the interior then of the Aventador Spider. And you see, we do see some of Audi resembling elements we've shown you before as well. And uh, for example, the, the very knobs. And just remember these forms we see here, then you can also see the comparison to the Huracan Spider. And now let's get inside and see how the roof opens and then we can also take a better look at the interior. Because this roof is supposed to open in about 18 seconds and the good thing is there you can also see the technology advantages. You can also do it until the speed of 50 kilometers an hour. So let's see, let's start the ignition. Then you count the seconds if that's really right. So what do you think of this mechanism? There we go. Then of course you can also lower the windows. You see there's one behind me. Yeah, that's kind of the wind cut window. Let's, let's call it that way. There it is for the windows.
those are the keys for the Huracan Spider. You see the resemblance to the Audi keys. I think that's not really a bad thing because they are high class. You we'll also get a nice Lamborghini badge to that. And thanks to the Lamborghini dealer here in Düsseldorf, we can also show you the car today. So let's open it again. You see the door handles. They plop out and then you can open them. They go quite straight in. And of course, Lamborghini is all about being flat, 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 flat. So you really go flat in there. And you've maybe seen already the Alcantara seats here. Especially for me, I guess. Great surface here for racing because you don't you know, go to the left and the right while driving. You really get held onto the seats and they offer a really great side support, especially here also in the shoulder part. But of course, you have to realize those are really kind of well, tight sport seats, so you also can't move around that well. And they are, of course, also very hard. So maybe also not the best pick then for the long term. And, and I've mentioned it, for example, in the Audi R8 review. I would there also not go for the bucket seats, but the normal seats, because, you know, they don't look that spectacular, but then offer more riding comfort. And at the end of the day, also with sports cars, you do need a little bit of riding comfort. See those ones, carbon fiber. So they're also very light, safe, another weight, and it also look great. But you know, oh, already now starting to get a little bit hard then. Let's close the door. And what you see from the interior also as a comparison to the predecessor model, of course we got kind of new buttons here. Also the screen is not here in the middle anymore. It's right there in the center. And that is kind of, I'm going to turn on the ignition by the way here. That's one of my favorite features here with the Lamborghini. It's really like we're starting a rocket. You flip that up. Mr. President, let's start the missiles. Then you start it. And this one is a 12.3 inch screen. And it is actually the Audi virtual cockpit. And it has been introduced in this very model as the closed top version for the first time. Not first time in the Audis. And so you got everything in a digital screen right here. And of course, as we use from Lamborghini, the RPM meter is the most important thing then. The steering wheel, kind of slim. I mean, so it's short. It's thick here, but in, in general, very compact. And I think that's also quite good and very high class shifting pedals here. We've seen it also in some luxury cars. They are not such of good quality here. Everything is really okay. And that is really, I say, remarkable that all of the buttons here, because you got also a lot of Audi technology. Listen to the sound here as well. Click, click, click. So you got the the Audi quality level here, and they profit from, for example, that the Audi got this special laboratory just for the sound design. So they can also use this one. Aircraft inspired instruments here for the windows I've shown you as well, and for example, also for the warning indicators. And what else is kind of special? Those design you usually find in the front grille with those comped structures, you can also find here on the interior. So a really refined interior, a lot of straight lines, but at the same time, very spectacular. So if you want this very dramatic sport interior, I think you're exactly right here. And as I said again, the advantage is that we also got a high quality level. Now some detailed look. Again, the virtual cockpit is does not flicker, by the way, that is the light here inside. In reality, it does not really flicker. And you can also switch to the different sections of the interior here. Right now, for example, you can also pick the GPS. That is all working with the setup screen. Of course, not good for the co-driver, but I mean, maybe that's also not the most important aspect here. That's the GPS screen, for example, but you can also go back and go to media for your music and something like that. And um, what else is here? Car information or telephone, Bluetooth connection, fire assist, uh, fire assistant, yeah, that's driver assistant systems, for example, the parking aid and so on, or if you want to put in the rain sensor on or out. By the way, vents and so on, you control via this central extra screen here, also from temperature, there is below those aircraft buttons, there everything is displayed how you want to, and if you don't have to activate, you've got digital instruments for the let's say racing instruments, for example, the turbo pressure, oil temperature, and um, also um, how charged the battery is. I really want to take this ignition button home, don't you? Storage spaces, well, it's not the most important aspect of the car, but you also want to maybe 
bring your suitca uh, suitcase maybe in the front or also briefcase in the uh, mobile phone. That's why we started the inside of the doors. Of course, all slim because the space shouldn't get wasted. Then here also very slim glove box as well. Um, really not that you can stuff a lot of uh, things in here. By the way, that's very good for the co-driver and for the driver on both sides. You know, when you're going right and left, that your knees are not being, getting hurt. Also surfaced with Alcantara. Very good solution here as well. Then the middle part, and below the armrest, we got 12 volt power supply in here and also you know, this kind of adapter that can end in USB that you can also charge your phone. But again, not too much space in here. And in the very middle part here, we got the sound system and also a CD slot. Talking about storage, here of course, because we have the engine behind, I can also show you, this is actually, well, a very small suitcase. I've shown you with the Audi R8 in here. Does fit in here, another 12 volt power supply in here. But you see, you have to think about when going to the airport, maybe not the best car for going there. Now, by the way, you can only electrically open that one when the ignition is turned on. That's the difference to the hood um, in the front. That one is actually opening also when the ignition is turned off. Same with the Audi R8, by the way. And well, you can't really see much of the engine right there because it's rather hidden, but it's below there is a V10, 5.2 liters of displacement, 610 horsepower, and the most important, naturally aspirated. That was also the thing that I really loved about the R8. And this one really produces a great sound. one heck of a sound and I think it's really great that we have the naturally aspirated engine here. I was very disappointed with the Aventador sound actually because it was so high revving turbo sound, Formula One alike. This one really has a core sound, low frequency as it should be actually. Of course I didn't turn up the RPMs till the very end because that would be you know, very bad for the engine. So it wasn't warmed up before and you know when you start an engine don't really push the throttle that hard and that was only I did now that was like only like three, three and a half, four thousand RPM, so really not high for the engine here. And you heard what all we kind of sound we got there. By the way, one thing I wanted to mention from the exterior also is that when the roof is open, actually, those strong hoods here are really accentuated, and also the air intake for the engine here is also accentuated in comparison to when the roof is closed. Now, I think this is one of the very rare cases where the Spider even looks better than the very close version or what you think about it. And now to the conclusion, if you really want the most dramatic exterior design of all sports cars, you are exactly right with this wheel and especially also with the Huracan, also in comparison to the predecessor, now available as a Spider finally and you know I'm a convertible open top fan, I really always enjoy driving with the open top. So if I had the chance, I would also go for the Spider version, of course. The interior, well, there we had the advantage that we can really rely on the Audi parts, and I think it is an advantage, not a disadvantage, because, as I said, we have seen a lot of luxury cars above 200,000 euros, which, you know, were very exclusive, had great design, but really were kind of already bad on quality, and that's not the case here. So here, you can get the exclusive car, but at the same time with a very refined quality. Of course, it makes more sense to go for the Audi R8, for example, because it's less uh, money, but kind of for the same quality and the same kind of performance. But if you know, want to have it even more exclusive in this price region, then, then it's just a logical choice to go for the Lamborghini and not for the Audi in this case. So I hope you liked our static premiere review here and give us a feedback what you think about this car, especially now the Spider version and also the comparison to the Galada predecessor and also to the bigger model, the bigger brother, the Aventador, and about the sound, of course. And I hope I'll also see you at the next Autogefühl episode with Thomas.